Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of put call parity, an important relationship between options. This is the formula for put call parity. It connects the price or value of a European style call option and the price or value of a European style put option. With this formula, we connect the call and the put option. We can solve for the call given the put and vice versa. Notice the C is a small c, not a capital C, and the P is a small p, not a capital P. That signifies these are European style options, meaning they can be exercised only at expiration. So with this formula, we have a way to directly connect the option prices. And the insight behind the formula is that we can create two portfolios that have identical payoffs. To illustrate, let's assume that the call here has a strike price of $10 and the put also has the same strike price of $10. That's an assumption. The call and the put have to have the same strike price. They are going to be options on the stock that let's also say currently has a value or price of ten dollars. So far we've got a call with a strike of ten, a put with a strike of ten, and a stock priced at ten. This other part here, I'll call this a bond with a face value of ten, meaning we're borrowing cash that we use to exercise the call in the future. So K here in the formula is the strike price. It's the $10. We can think of it as the face value of a bond such that at the end of the period we will receive the face value or the $10 and we can use that to exercise the option. So the strike price here signified by K is discounted at the continuously compounded rate of R over T, the number of periods. E raised to the negative RT is familiar to us in finance as a way to continuously discount this quantity here, which is again the strike price. So to recap, what we have are two portfolios on the left, a portfolio consisting of a call option, a European style call option with a strike price of 10, and we have the present value of cash or a bond with a face value of 10. That means it's going to be worth $10 at the end of the period and something less than 10 today. On the right, we have another portfolio, a European style put option with a strike of $10 and a single share of the stock also priced at 10. So that's denoted by S sub zero. The reason this equality holds is that the payoff of these two portfolios is the same regardless of what happens to the stock. So if the stock doesn't move at all, here's my assumption for what happens to the stock in the future. So think about this in the future now and then we're going to look at the payoff. If the stock doesn't budge at all, the call is going to expire at the money and therefore have no value as will the put. But on the left, for this portfolio, we will have the face value of the bond, which is $10, and we'll still have the stock on the right, which didn't budge at $10. So the portfolio on the left is a worthless call plus our bond face value of 10 for a total value of 10. Our portfolio on the right is a worthless put plus that stock that didn't budge of 10 for a total port value value of $10. So under the scenario where the stock didn't budge, both portfolios on the left and the right have a net value of $10. Now assume the stock moves up to $13. On the left, our call option will expire in the money and it will have $3 of intrinsic or embedded value. The stock of 13 minus the strike of 10, $3 for our call option. Our bond will be redeemed at face value of 10, and so the net value of this portfolio is 13. What happens to the portfolio on the right? 
Well, the stock under this scenario went up to 13. We have a put with striking at 10, so the put expires worthlessly. It's out of the money at expiration. However, on this portfolio, we hold a single share of the stock, which is now worth 13. And notice, this portfolio therefore has a total value of 13. Again, this this repl portfolio, which replicates this, has the same payoff. And the same thing if the stock drops down to 7. Under that scenario, the call for this portfolio on the left, the call is now out of the money, expiring worthless. However, we can still redeem the bond for $10. On the right, this time, if the stock drops, the put is now in the money, and we can exercise for a gain of $3. That's $10 strike minus the lower stock of $7 gives us an intrinsic value of $3 at expiration. And we again hold a single value of the share of the stock, which is now down at 7, meaning this portfolio is worth 3 plus 7 or 10. So notice under either scenario, under any scenario, the total payoff between the two portfolios is equivalent. This is a demonstration of the equality between the two portfolios and gives us the put call parity. And in fact, this portfolio at the end is going to be worth the maximum of the stock price or the strike price denoted by K. And again, these are these payoffs are in terms of future values, and but we can use this put call parity to derive and talk about the present value of the call option and the put option. So I hope that was this was helpful. This is David Harper, the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.